This is a tour of uh, GridLab Strum. Uh, it's designed for use for a 256 or a 128 size grid. It's the top half of this 256 is what I call the play field. It's designed to emulate a uh, eight string guitar if all the strings were tuned in fourths. So this uh, row down here would be the bottom lowest string and this row up here would be the, the top string. You can specify what you want your, your low note to be and you can see these this pattern changing. It's showing you the, the white keys and dark keys. Um, of, a, of a chromatic scale. So depending on what you have your low note set to, uh, you can configure that. Um, you can change the, the brightness of the keys. So I've, you know the orange brightness doesn't necessarily match up to the brightness if you're using like the white LED. So that's all configurable. Um, so once you have some keys that are lit, then you can strum an arpeggio with the arc encoder. And it's velocity sensitive, so if you if you strum it fast, you'll get a you know a higher velocity. But if you go you know, lower, um, it will be lighter. Um, you can also change the velocity manually by moving this encoder. So you can play that uh, manually if you want. You can also change the duration of the notes that you're playing. Um, you can change the lit notes as you're playing them. You can turn off a note. And you'll note that there's um, only eight notes of polyphony, so it's not like it can have multiple um, f notes fretted on the same string. So each one of these is an individual string. Um, you can have 16 different presets of configurations of the strings. Actually, it's four banks of 16, depending on how many banks you have selected or which bank you have selected. Uh, conceivably, you could just you know, define a triad, and then you can transpose that pattern without using a preset. And because the tuning is in force, if you just move the pattern up a string, then it's going to move up to the four. And down a string is going to go, so you have a one, four, five. Um, you can transpose with the arc if you like. Which is fun for like um, really interesting arpeggios that move up the fretboard very quickly. If you double click uh, in this little cursor area, then you're going to return back to zero. Now, um, you're not stuck with one arpeggio either. This is only one example of an arpeggio. Arpeggios are, pro are programmable and can be of arbitrary length. Uh, you can choose different kinds of arpeggios. So maybe. Now, you'll note that when I'm moving the encoder, it's, it's moving the arpeggio in a particular direction. If I move the encoder the other, other, the opposite direction, it's going to play that same arpeggio in reverse. If you don't want to ar articulate the, the strumming with the encoder, you can use auto strumming. Um, that's 16th notes. Um, you can also play it in reverse on the other side. Uh, the arc encoders can be in, uh, configured to have various uh, functions. So right now you see I have velocity and, and duration, and then transpose and strumming. Um, but you can also, if you prefer, you know, select the, the pattern and arpeggio instead. So if you're using a 128 and you want to use these functions that are down here in the 256, you can actually do that. Um, the arpeggios, you have several different uh, algorithms to choose from that will match an arpeggio to how many strings you have available because maybe the arpeggio uses, you know, all eight strings and maybe you only have, you know, like three notes selected. And so there's various rules for governing how the arpeggio gets adapted to the number of notes that you have uh, available to you. Uh, anyway, this is available at my GitHub now, so you can uh, go ahead and download it, and it's free, and I hope you enjoy it.